Today we're focusing on how to improve at Modern Warfare 2. Luckily, it is one of the lowest skill gapped games around, so it's really easy to learn the mechanics and kind of figure out how to min-max them. So whether you're looking to get more kills, improve your KD, win more, or improve your overall score, there's a lot of different things in here that's gonna help you out with that. So one of the first things you wanna get dialed in are your settings, and this goes for your graphics and controller or keyboard and mouse sensitivity so that you can make sure you're as accurate as possible, your game looks exactly the way you want. I did detailed videos on how to find the best settings for console and controller, so those will be available in the description if you wanna check those out. But overall, the whole point of getting your settings dialed in in a private match is so that you can make sure that you are having the best experience, but that also that you are shooting as straight as you want, you have control of your weapon, and then you're not going to miss. Because no matter of any of these other tips, if you can't shoot straight, you're probably gonna lose gunfights against people that can shoot straight. So you wanna make sure you get that dialed in immediately. The next thing to be aware of is the game plays significantly slower than we've had in recent memory for Call of Duty. So you have to modify your play style to adapt to that because almost everything is slower. If you dolphin dive, you can't pull up your gun right away. So you're kind of a sitting duck, especially if you're jumping across. Snipers can see that. They know it's gonna be telegraphed, so it's gonna be an easy kill. Same thing with sliding. It's very predictable motion. You can't fire while it, so you have to do it very deliberately. When you reload, you have to make sure you're in a safe spot to reload because when you go reload, if the animation's too far along, you cannot cancel it like previous Call of Duties. So that has to be deliberate and be aware to switch to your secondary, hopefully you have a pistol. If you pull out dead silence, there's an animation for that, which takes a little bit of time. And then it makes noise for a few seconds so that your enemies will hear you. So you gotta wait a few seconds, then go in. Uh, on top of that, we have the streaks. Anytime you pull out the streaks, it does do an animation, which can be canceled by going prone, but that's still not the point, it's still slow. And then you have health regeneration, which feels very, very slow. So you got all these slow and slow and slow and slow. Your, your sprint to fire time, your aim down sight time, everything you equip in the game basically makes your gun slower. So you really have to be a little bit more methodical and play it more tactically, right? Like that's kind of what the game's going for and that's how you're gonna improve. Does that mean you can't be aggressive? No, you can definitely still be aggressive, uh, but you have to take that into account and then understand that aspect that you should just be slowing it down, not playing as reckless, and then choose your times to be aggressive. And within this game, they give you a few different tools. Obviously you have a UAV, which is unlocked pretty early on. You get Ghost, which is an ultimate perk towards the end of, of your perk selection. You'll be able to equip that so that you can be a little bit more hidden on the on the mini map when you are running around. If you want to stay off the mini map completely, you got to combine that with the suppressor so that when a UAV is up, that you are not visible while firing your weapon and having ghosts. Uh, and then you got to go ahead and combine that with dead silence. You get pretty quickly so that you can go ahead and time that out when you want to go for a flank. You got to sync all those things together um, so you can get some easier kills. So a lot of this is going to come back to awareness and positioning, which we'll go ahead and uh, dive a little bit deeper into now so here's a quick overhead view of the map and i think this gives you a good idea on how the map flow should work normally you have your team that's going to spawn on one section of the map and then you have the opponents that spawn on the opposite end of the map this game is a little bit different. There's normally designated spawns and it takes a little bit of, of reps and, and you gotta play the game to kind of figure those out. And really what the easiest way to do this is just pay attention when you are spawning into the map, kind of where you're spawning and that'll give you a good idea of where enemies are gonna be spawning if, if you're not spawning in that specific area. So on this map, they have high weighted spawns in this corner of the map and then over here, and then that could change depending on the mode. Um, so in this case, in Domination, the, the, the little airplane starts here and here, and then what will start happening is you start capturing, a lot of actions going on, and the map gets a little bit crazy. So what you really gotta be aware of is that when you look at the mini map, you can kind of see where your teammates are. So if you saw a teammate here, 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 then you know that the enemies are gonna be in the middle. And this is kind of a simplification of exactly what's happening. So even if enemies are not showing up on the minimap because they're either running ghost, there's no UAV in the air, or there's a lot of different elements, you gotta factor in knowing where the spawns are likely to come. So if the enemies are spawning here and they wanna run this way, 
you already know where they're going to be coming out from. They're going to walk from here and then they're going to come out through here. So more than likely, this is where you're going to go ahead and get engagement. So that's why a lot of people like to camp on this roof on top of farm because you can see people in there. If they want to go ahead and take the longer route, they can come through over here. And that's why this spawn, I, I don't necessarily like the spawn in general. That's just where the game decides it is because you're kind of left out in a choke point. And whether you want to come through here or here, you're kind of in a choke where you have to come out and you have to run out and you have to sprint or jump or whatever because somebody is going to be pre-aiming it. So it kind of makes it a little bit tricky how you have to play the game at times. So when you move around the map, a lot of times what you're kind of doing is something similar we see in Battle Royale, at least now with the new squad spawn mechanic is you do like that pinwheel rotation. You're kind of working your way around the outsert and you're kind of doing a lap around. You kind of generally want to stay on the outskirts when it comes to most of the maps. If you go in the middle, then there's too many lanes that can actually shoot you and that's going to lead to easy deaths. So if you want to avoid deaths, you can go ahead and make sure that you're going to adjusting for that by staying to the outskirts. You can go ahead and move through this building. Obviously, if we know if we're in the open you're here, you're going to get shot from multiple angles. So this... What happens is there's building you can cover A, there's building you can cover B, you can work through, and you can kind of work through the building. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but that's kind of what's necessary, especially with the squad spawn. Teammates are going to be spawning on top of you, so it kind of throws sometimes the logic out of whack on where you think spawns would be. Basically doing a loop back and forth kind of rotates and allows you to kind of have a good grounding of where the enemies are as well as your teammates are and hopefully there's some streaks in the air that'll kind of help accommodate you in these areas so they can kind of not necessarily have to guess because obviously guessing can only get you so far even if they are educated guesses so that's a simplified version obviously as you get a little bit better there, there's more advanced things when i'll do probably a full dedicated video on the mini map in the future if that's something you guys would be interested in let me know for sure in the comment section that's something i will cover um the other part is now that you kind of got a little bit of awareness you got to make sure that you're winning your 1v1s we know how to shoot straight we know kind of where the enemies are going to be coming from we're not moving around too fast let's how do we win our one one-on-ones if somebody comes around the corner you come around the corner at the exact same time ideally what you're trying to do is you're going to hip fire while you're aiming down sight and that'll make your obviously you're hip firing you're centering you're getting on target you're shooting hopefully you land at least one bullet by the time you aim down sight and then you will be able to win the gunfight because you got that first shot off and that's the key in a lot of these you need to get the first shot up hopefully you aim for the chest the key is to aim for the chest because when the enemy shoots you, you will get flinched often to a headshot. Obviously, you would think, oh, you know, just aim for the head. But when you aim for the head, unless you have a one-shot kill weapon, what will happen is you'll get flinched and you'll miss the shot. And a lot of times people aren't aware of this, so they're aiming for the head and then they're losing gunfights. You aim for the upper chest, when you get flinched, you're going to get an automatic headshot. And the TTK drops dramatically with a lot of these weapons when you get a headshot. If you know somebody's in a specific area, when you're moving around, you got to go ahead and utilize your tacticals. One of the best tacticals, obviously, right now is a flash that a lot of people use. The shock stick, it doesn't have a huge area, but it is there. Snapshots could allow you to see enemies, and this could be very useful because a lot of the objects you can actually penetrate them with your bullets so it makes it super effective there on top of that with lethals the most broken one especially if somebody's kind of camping it up the drill charge is super effective for that just throw it to the wall it'll pretty much go through even if they have stuff that's going to protect them it will make it so that you are at least able to move them out of the position, make them one shot, and, and put the gunfight in your favor uh, while they're moving. The other part is some basic fundamentals with the creative class. The creative class seems super complicated this year, but ends up being relatively easy to use. The main thing you want to probably focus on are what on quote unquote meta weapons, especially if you don't have a lot of playtime. You got to use the weapons that are probably the most ideal. The M4 is a good all around starter gun. I think there's other guns that are just as good, if not better, all around. Around, but this one's a bit good starter gun regardless of skill level you can always start with that one level it up and then you'll have access to the various attachments if you do like the iron sights keep the iron sights save an attachment you can go ahead and equip a bigger mag if you want to play a little bit more fast pace 45 round mag is probably good if you go 60 it will slow down quite a bit uh, and, and that's what we're noticing with a lot of attachments they do slow you down so if you're looking to have a little bit of movement and not get penalized so hard you kind of got to stick to what gives you the benefits without the drawback there's a laser that helps your aim down sight speed that's like a tack laser it helps with aiming stability 
This is very much like attack laser that we saw in Modern Warfare. Or you can go with the regular one, which is going to give you aim down sight speed without any of the laser visible, which we had those as well. Then we have the under barrel, which they do have one that helps with aiming stability, which is very similar like a tactical foregrip. So you can kind of keep it simple. And then for myself, I like to run a suppressor because I want to stay off the mini map. Personally, the one that helps with the sound suppression, bullet velocity, range, and recoil smoothness. This is all around best, and especially since we're making up for it with an aim down sight speed, this is kind of a, the way I would go and then probably build an optic. So kind of build it simple. The other part is you do not have to have five attachments, especially with all the penalty that's going on. Sometimes the gun will feel better with less attachments and that's okay. Th there's obviously gonna be different builds for different scenarios and you kind of just build it out based off of that. So perk package, it can get a little bit interesting because obviously it depends on what level you're at. I think bomb squad is a good way to go just because it allows you to eat a little bit of explosives. The other one, you can go a lot of different routes. I think tracker is pretty good. I think if you go double time, you're just asking to be punished. Lots Sometimes I go with scavenger because I'm trying to go on a little bit of a longer streak and you can run out of ammo pretty quick if people aren't running the exact same weapon. Uh, the other one that probably makes the most sense is extra tactical because then that'll allow you to get an extra stun. Then I think for how slow a lot of the stuff is in the game, fast hands works really well unless you're going for streaks. If you want a little bit faster streaks, you can actually go hard line and this will allow you to get UAVs after like three kills instead of four and then you get a counter at four kills instead of five. Then you got a field upgrade. I think dead silence is probably the best if you're actually looking to be mobile if you don't care you don't want to be mobile there's other things you can lock down an area portable radar is pretty effective trophy system for the objective you can actually do a lot with that um, and then we have deployable cover there's ddos and play i mean there's a lot of fun ones in here uh but i think the trophy system is probably the best all around if you're playing objective game modes like hard point where you got to jump on there throw one of those on there you can sit somebody has to win a gunfight to take you out and since they have to move into the room they are penalized and you get a free kill generally kill streaks are going to be better as score streaks for the most of the time unless you're just playing straight tdm i think um score streaks are generally going to be better so you can go ahead and toggle that at the bottom left you can go ahead and see that if toggles on and off i would put those on and then generally what you're going to want to do is start with lower streaks if you're consistently getting those then maybe ramp up one or two of the streaks uh if you start off high and you realize that you're not getting these every match because these are something you should be getting every single match um, if that's not the case, then you should probably tone it down so you're actually getting the usefulness of score streaks or kill streaks, depending on how you want to build that out. One other huge thing is to play in a party. If, if you're in a party, then you can give comms and communicate where people are at, maybe double stun, double nade, whatever the case is, and you can work effectively as a team. There's a lot of ways to find parties, whether you want to go on Reddit, in the comment section, on Discord. There's tons of avenues to find other people that have similar play styles or doing the same things, whether you're leveling up a weapon or grinding a specific challenge or whatever the case is then go ahead and help you out and build a team to go ahead and play with as we head into warzone 2 and dmz appreciate all the support of the content thank you for watching as always have a great day